Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module five, lesson two. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. This says, I can use unit cubes to find the volume of a right rectangular prism. And the learning objective is to find volume by counting the number of unit cubes that fill a right rectangular prism. And the prior learning from third grade is students measured area by counting unit squares. And students expressed area in square units such as square meters, square inches, and square feet. Okay, so moving into lesson two, it starts with a word problem under the spark you're learning. It says, a toy company's engineers determine that the best way to package number cubes with one unit length into a single box is to stack them in the shape of a right rectangular prism. How many different kinds of right rectangular prisms could this number of cubes be stacked in? Okay, so they're using the image over to the right. And so right now we know that the length here is one, two, three, four. The height here is three. And then the width going backwards to see we, right here, we have a blue and orange a purple and an orange. So that would also be four. So the volume for this example would be three by four by four. Now, I want to figure out how many cubes that is, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply. All right, I know in my head 3 times 4 is 12, so then I'm going to do 12 times 4 and figure out what is the volume of the um, shape that they're giving us. So 2 times 4 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4, meaning that my volume or the total amount of unit cubes is 48. So what they're asking me in this problem is how many different variations can I stack these cubes so that I still have the 48 cubes, okay? The first thing and the most ridiculous thing that comes to my mind is doing 48 tall, just one cube right on top of each other, 48 tall, okay? So what that would look like is doing 48 by one by one. So there's 48 is the height and then the length and the width is just one, right? Because they're all on top of each other. Okay, that's my starting point. Then I know if I choose to just change one of the widths or lengths, it'll also change the height. For example, if I left this length one and I just changed the width to two, that means that my 48 has to change so that the three numbers being multiplied is still equal to 48. So if I know if I'm changing one of them to two, that means I need to take half of 48 and half of 48 is 24. So this would also be a variation where all 48 cubes are being used, but now I have 24 stacked high and I have two of them next to each other. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Can I do it by changing the 2 to a 3? Yes, I can. So if I leave this a 1 and change this to a 3, do we know what 48 divided by 3 is? Well, I can always find out. I'm going to do my work over to the side. So 48 divided by 3. 3 goes into 4 one time, leaving me with 18. 3 goes into 18 six times. All right, so then this number over here would be 16. And I'm just going to go ahead and erase my work just so I can have some more room. All right, now can I do it by four times? I think so. So moving this to one and four, do we know what 48 divided by four is? Well, eight divided by four would be a two, and four divided by four is a one. So now what I have is 12 high, but I have four of them, still just one single um, cube long. All right, can I do a five? No, because I know my rules. Uh, 48 doesn't end in a five, and it doesn't end in a zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that one, and I'm gonna try my last one as a six. All right, so 48 divided by six, that is one of my multiplication rules that I'm supposed to know. Six times eight is 48. So now I have eight tall and I have six of them long, still only one wide. 
All right. And I know that it can't be seven because seven times seven is 49, which is not 48. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. So that's what it would be with just one um, width long and all the different variations. All right. So now what if I made the width two? So if I had my last number be two, let's go ahead. I know that if it were one, it would still be 24. I already did that um, option here. So what if I made it also be two? Because that would be a different variation of my cubes. So 48 divided by four, because I know I have two times two. So what is 48 divided by four? Well, we did that earlier here, and we know that it would be 12. So 12 times two times two is another variation that would give me 48. All right, so what if I left this two and made this one three? making it six, and that one we had here. So I know that my last number would be eight, because six times eight is 48. All right, and I can keep going through and do um, two times four, but that would be eight, which would just give me six again, right? So that's not gonna work. So if I moved down and made this one, two times four, which is eight, then I can also have the opposite, which would be six, still using this one as my base. All right, and then if I go, went ahead and switched this two into a three, I would just have all the other variations of the numbers I've already had, okay? So I know that I have here, I have five options here, three options here, and then the one that it gave me up here, the one that it was shown. So I have five, three, and one, which means there are nine different variations of this cube using 48 cubes. Okay, just showing you different ways of different types of volumes that would all equal the same amount. Okay, so let's jump into the lesson under the build understanding question number one. All right, it says the picture shows a box designed to pack game cubes. Each game cube is the size of a unit cube, which means just one by one by one. So I'm gonna have you do A, B, C, and D, but first I wanna read through and kind of explain what they're asking. So for A, it says, how many game cubes can be packed into the bottom layer of the box with no gaps or overlaps? So remember, just the bottom layer, what they're asking is here, just that bottom line. Okay, for B, how many layers of game cubes can be packed into the box? So layers would be like the height. So here would be one layer, two layers, three layers, and four layers. Okay, so how many game cubes can be packed so the box is full and there are no gaps or overlaps? So how many game cubes total can fit into this little box? And D, the volume of the box can be found by finding the number of game cubes it takes to fill the box with no gaps or overlaps. Since each game cube is the size of a unit cube, what is the volume of the box in cubic units? So C and D are going to be the same answer, but you're going to write them in slightly different ways. All right, so go ahead and try all of number one, and I'm going to have you hit pause right here. All right, coming back. Let's go ahead and solve these four questions. So for A, it says how many game cubes can be packed into just the bottom layer of the box with no gaps or overlaps? Explain how you know. So in the bottom layer, I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across, and then I have just three wide. So my length times my width, finding the base, right, length times width, is 8 times 3. And I know that 8 times 3 is 24. So I'm going to have 24 cubes. And then explain how you know. You can say because you knew that your length was equal to 8 and your width was equal to 3, and you know that your base equals length times width, something like that. All right, for B, how many layers of game cubes can be packed into the box and how do you know? 
All right, remember what I showed you before is the layers. So I have one layer here and then I have two, three, and four. So I'm gonna have four layers and you can say something, how do you know? Because it's my height, right? Because how tall it is is my height, that's how many layers I can have. All right, for C, how many game cubes can be packed so the box is full and there are no gaps or overlaps? That really is asking for the volume. So the length times the width times the height. All right, so we know that we, I've written all the numbers. So I have eight, three, and four. Eight is my length, the width is, three is my width, and four is my height. So I need to multiply those all out together. So I know, I'm gonna take my biggest numbers and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do eight times four, and I know that that is one of my multiplication facts, 32. So once I have one of my facts, then I have to just multiply it by the smallest number, make it a little bit easier. So 32 times three, three times two is six, and three times three is nine. So how many game cubes can be packed? So the box has no gaps or overlaps. I'm gonna say 96 boxes or cubes. All right, and then D, the volume of the box can be found by finding the number of game cubes it takes to fill the box with no gaps or overlaps. So since each game cube is the size of a unit cube, what is the volume of the box in cubic units? Here's where it's a little bit different. Because it doesn't give us inches, millimeters, feet, this is just cubic units. This is where we're practicing. So what we wanna write here is we know the answer is 96, but it's 96 cubic units. The way that you write this is with a U and the exponent is a three. The three is a uh, cubic to where if it were two, it would be squared. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of the lesson and then I will see you for module five, lesson three.